In this video, we're going to discuss the market demand function of a good and the demand curve that's associated with that. So in the last video, we discussed the assumptions of perfect competition. And one of those was that um, the consumer and the producer, they both have no necessary control over market conditions. So their individual uh, demand or their individual supply will not necessarily affect the overall uh, conditions. So we're going to zero in first on the market demand. Okay, and essentially the market demand, okay, this is the demand, the demand curve. Okay, It's the demand curve faced by all sellers together, together. So it's the demand curve faced by all sellers altogether. So how do we obtain okay, the market demand? So how do we obtain this? Uh, how we obtain that is kind of intuitive. So what we do is, okay, recall, okay, an individual consumer's uh, Marshallian demand, so that's XI star, okay, is some function of uh, prices, say P1, P2, and their own income. And their Marshallian demand is the amount that they will demand okay, for a particular good or service. Okay, now, how do we calculate okay, the market demand? Well, essentially, we're just going to sum up all of the Marshallian demand functions of every single consumer in a given market. Okay, so note the consumer, okay, as we know from the assumptions, is assumed to take the prices of the goods as given. And the consumer will react to uh, changes in price by changing their demand for the good. But to get market demand, so to get market demand, okay, suppose there are H consumers. Suppose we have uh, H consumers. Essentially, okay, what we're going to do, okay, what we're going to do okay, is we're just going to sum up, okay, our market demand, that's QD, is just going to be equal to sum, I is equal to 1, until all the consumers have been summed up of their individual Marshallian demand functions, that's XIH, which is some function of P, okay? or prices, okay? And you're gonna get your uh, market demand function, which is some function of P. Now, again, it's some function of P because a consumer's demand reacts to changes in prices. And for now, we're gonna hold that income remains constant for everyone. So income doesn't play a role, or more specifically, more realistically, we'll just assume that everyone in the economy has approximately the same endowment or the same income, such that we can isolate the effect of price changes on the market demand uh, function here that we have. Okay, now, if you'll notice, okay, what we're going to notice as a property, okay, if you recall, okay, recall, there are some properties, okay, some properties of Marshallian demand functions, okay? And the first property is that if you uh, note that in a Marshallian demand function, if you derive it with respect to P, it is less than zero, which gives rise to our law of demand, which suggests that a consumer will demand less of a good if its price increases. And it also translates to how the market demand function works. So if you derive Q uh, D, in this case, it's just D, with respect to P, you should also expect that that would be uh, negative because if the price of the good in the market increases, then the overall market demand is expected to decrease. 